Breakfast with Cobb Colvin. Trickstar Radio. Right then, just gone 11 minutes past eight here on Trickstar Radio. We're inside the building. Great Adams joins us this morning. How are you feeling? Yeah, good, man. Good. good. Buzzing. Yeah, um, you know what? You know what? So am I because I'm just hearing banger after banger so far. We've had two back to back that have sounded awesome. Um, Anna, how are you feeling about those? I'm ones? good. You know what, man? I was, I'm just going to say this now. You radiate like such positivity. Like, I'm sitting <laughs> next to you and I feel like. I can do anything right now. <laughs> I don't know what it is about you, but like you're just Thank infectious, you, man. man. Thank Even you, man. your music, you can Appreciate definitely that, see it. Man. Man. It's definitely, it's definitely, a, it's something that I'm feeling, man. Like, yeah. It's, it's, um, it's often when we get, we have interviews in here, we have to like warm people up a little bit, yeah. and we have to kind of get people like going and have like a like like six or seven thousand conversations yeah. off the microphone <laughs> to get the, to get those sort of uh, good vibes rolling. But I feel uh, with this one, it's all very, very natural. natural like, yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, I kind, I kind of want to look into your sort of musical history then when we look when we're looking through this. Like, what was your sort of route primarily into making music so I want to get on to your the uniqueness of your sound with the harmonies and melodies but um, where, where did it all kick off um, you know what you're, you're not going to believe this because what I'm about to say now is going to sound crazy right so my mum's a musician right my mum was a choir director um, growing up I wasn't actually a good singer no. okay right. so I tried to sing uh, about 9-10 and um, people just didn't like the fact that I wasn't very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my, everyone was like, you know what? Your mom's a music director doesn't mean that you can <laughs> But you're not. Sing. <laughs> so they went, oh, you need to go learn to play the drums. So I learned to play the drums when I was 10 years old. Okay. As a professional at 12. Um, then I started listening to an artist called Lucky Dube. Okay, it's not it's not very popular around here, but it's like popular in, in Nigeria. It's actually a Zimbabwean artist. It's a reggae artist called Lucky Dube. And he was just a weird person to listen to at that point because all my mates were listening to the popping artists like Lil Wayne and, you know, all the guys that rapped and all yeah. that stuff. But I listened to him a lot and he just had so many beautiful ladies singing behind him with, with so many melodies and stuff. And I started to deeply understand why it's important to have melodies yeah. and that's where my sound sort of originated from from how he did his melodies the high pitch the low pitch he did like three different harmonies for one part mm. nice to think sort <laughs> of like a choir like you so were like saying a choir, yeah and I was allowed to join, join the choir back when I was about 14 and I became the choir director at 16 because I, I became Mad. so good. <laughs> but so, so, so it's a quick turnaround. It was, yeah. yeah. It went from you're not that good at singing to you <laughs> to, literally oh, yeah, are talking yeah. to other people learn, and teaching them how to sing. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, Mad. but it, it's an honest, honest story. But yeah. there you go. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's quite an amazing one because obviously, uh, as I'll say again, we have a lot of people on the show and everyone has very kind of different routes. A lot of people kind of like start off producing and then go mm -hmm. into like doing their own vocals on top. Some people are influenced very much by like, sort of like the playground scenario uh -huh. of um, of kind of like doing this, doing that, and then move into singing a little a, a little bit later on. But the fact that you've kind of had that more sort of choir based yeah. sort of um, backing with yourself and it's, def it's definitely something that comes through with the uh, with the composition and the structure mm -hmm. of the uh, of, of the tunes you're putting together because you can just hear that sort of like backing a lot of the sort of backing um, sort of musicality of it is actually vocal based it is, yes, yes. Um, and it's definitely something is that something you find yourself doing <clears throat> um, intentionally no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be honest I think it's just in, it's, it's just in, it's enacted inside of me now yeah. because it's all I've known you know what I mean it's all I've understood it's, it's what I learned from day one so for me now it's like that's all I do you know it doesn't happen naturally sometimes I do a song and then I, I say to myself, you know what, you, you're not going to harmonise this because it's getting way too much. Yeah. <laughs> 20 sat, minutes. Sat 20. there with, like, with another, with the, on the 70th layer of yeah. the same one. Yeah, two minutes later, I'm putting all the auto, tenor, everything, treble, everything on it. And then I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have done that, but it sounds nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's quite an interesting one because there's such like, a, <coughs> it, it, with, with this sort of thing specifically where you're kind of like, like stacking and stacking and stacking sort of mm. vocals it's something that you do hear across such like a a wide range of different sounds like everything pretty much from sort of Enya to sort of new yeah, school R&B there's like such like a like a depth of sound when you have those sort of like stacked up harmonies and, and melodies yeah. and it just makes stuff sound a bit more ethereal more than it anything does, else yeah. it gives it almost like a sort of like heavenly quality mm -hmm. um, which is why choirs have that similar sort of thing of, of like that heavenly sort of quality um, what would you say in, in this sort of period of time of kind of um, of having your root into music would be the thing you've kind of learned the most about your yourself when you're when you're putting stuff together. I think one thing. I think the thing that I've learned the most is that I am very. I'm OCD in okay. my music. I mean, a lot of people have said to me that you know, people who work with me, they usually say, "Why do you spend like three hours doing the intro?" Mm -hmm. I mean, the first song we played, "Buddy." What people don't know is, "Buddy" actually took seven hours to do the intro. Wow. Seven hours. Seven hours. Seven hours. For an just intro. the intro. Just the intro. Not the song, just the intro. How long was the intro? 
The intro was like <laughs> 10 seconds. No <laughs> way, man. I'm like, honestly, honestly, it took seven hours because I kept, I did the first intro, I changed it, did it again, changed it, and then I realized, you know what I want? I want a whole bloody choir in the intro. <laughs> And then let's redo it. Yeah, let's redo it all. So I started redoing it as I stuck it. I think I stuck it like forty something vocals just in the intro. And then two days before I was gonna send it off for release, I re- I decided that I didn't I didn't think it was good enough. So you changed it again. So then I added another voice to it, and that's why at the beginning you hear a hey, yo wagwan right about now. Me, what I introduce you to that that was done two days before I sent it off to to, to the release. Right. So I think the thing about about me is that it has to be the best. It has to be. But do you think that's a bad thing? I don't see that as a bad thing at all. It's your music. Well, if you're if you're not my manager, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You you, start hiding tell, away from I've you. been on the other side of that scenario before <laughs> from a management perspective and uh, I can see both sides I'll put it up and it up can like, I can see both sides um, but yeah I mean it, it definitely does tend to yield the, the strongest results you can have yeah. when you have that mindset of it, it I need to make sure it's Missing the best about, uh, yeah. um, and we're going to jump into another tune next um, this is a track entitled Perfect um, it's just gone 17 minutes past 8 here give me an introduction to this one uh, Perfect Love is actually not on the EP but it's a song that I love so much because it features Shelley Shelley Ravid is, uh, is an artist from London she's absolutely amazing um, it's a song that we did last last year and it's done very good numbers and it's one of my one of my favourite songs so I thought you guys would enjoy it nice. good man that's what I'm loving. I'm loving I'm loving the bangers so far you enjoying the tunes? oh, oh. yeah I'm loving this <laughs> I'm loving this it's, so a, it's, a very, it's a very enjoyable one this morning keep it locked uh, we are live on DAB and via the apps this is Trickstar Radio you can lock us in at trickstarradio.com oh yes waking up Brighton breakfast with Cobb Colvin